All right, here we have a quick unboxing of First Thoughts on a newer or newer professional recording microphone stand. It's a desktop boom type arm mechanism, and this is what actually comes inside of the box. You have the clamp here and the actual arm itself. Now, this clamp is uh, made out of metal and plastic, and here it actually comes with a mic stand that you can put like a lifestyle mic, like a shore mic or something like that. And inside there, you'll see the adapters made out of plastic to actually adapt to a thicker or full size microphone stand. Now, this actually, if you can see my hand, it's only about maybe two two and a half feet or so extended it's not that long you know it's very light duty it's way lighter and smaller than i was imagining because i see a lot of people using this with it seems to be full-size condenser microphones and i'll show that later how I personally won't be using it for that as it wasn't my purpose in the first place. This is how you actually mount it once you mount it to the desk or some type of table. You just put that piece in there and tighten it up. Now this uh, pin right here is actually kind of small. So what you can do is take the internal uh, locking mechanism that's inside this adapter that I'm screwing it in with. I just basically used a screwdriver, unscrewed it out. It's made out of plastic. For my purpose, I'm just going to use it. Uh, I usually wouldn't trust something plastic like that to hold anything, but I'm only using this for a shotgun mic. This isn't about gator frameworks uh quick release but this is what i'm using it on so let me just show you how that works go ahead and take this plastic adapter screw piece and uh screw that back on there and then i'm going to take either you can take your full size shock mount if it requires this size or this size pin hole and then go ahead and uh, screw it on there but for me since i'm using the gator frameworks quick release right here you're just going to screw that directly on here like this now once you do this i know this isn't about this but you'll see a you'll notice a red tab on the top of this adapter that red tab is kind of like a safety warning so if you see red it's not secure you need to close it up to the point where no red is showing uh, i almost dropped my very expensive condenser mic in in the studio because of that one time luckily i didn't have the mic on it and it was just a shock mount that fell to the ground so i learned my lesson i always double check and make sure and it's very tricky sometimes if you're having your mic hanging upside down so you may want to just use two hands and make sure that that is uh, actually locked in place and i'll show you once it is actually locked in place like that it'll definitely hold the weight of no matter what type of mic you're holding now because i'm just using a lightweight shock mount a shotgun mic this is the one to be exact it's the rode ntg1 and this is the one i'm actually speaking on right now very lightweight so you don't really have to tighten these knobs too much much. I really don't have to tighten it at all to be honest and this actual little uh, nut right here in this bolt this is pretty much if you need it tighter you can actually screw it tighter if you need be or if you need if you need to now this clamp right here it is foamed on one side so it won't scratch the top of your desk it's just give you a quick idea how it may look now this is my full size main condenser microphone that I use and as you'll see here this is a full size mic to me for the most part and the full size shock mount the weight of this in my hand without even testing it I can just tell that this type of boom arm is not made for it. Even though I see people using mics that look similar to the U87 that I have here, it definitely looks way too light duty and you'll notice it when you get it. It's hard to tell from pictures, but just take my word for it. I wouldn't put any expensive microphone on it. Maybe some lightweight microphone or condenser if it actually feels light to the touch. Price only comes around $13 after shipping, which I did the same day because I just wanted it and I paid an extra five or $6. So I ended up only paying about $20, but this is great for any type of podcasting or anything for like what i'm doing so if this is helpful at all please hit like and subscribe or visit www.howtoandreviews.com till next time